Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. We're rocking and rolling this week. So excited. Next week, we're going to start filming season two of the Two Minute Drill. What? It's so much better. It's an hour long. Five super contestants, five super vignettes. Christina, thank you so much for visiting us. It was unbelievable. And uh, it was just nice to give somebody a hug for once. Oh, my goodness. Great to see you. Jakey Bakey on his way. Blaine, my question maniac. Colleen, good to see you. Mikey, let's go. Here we go. All right, let's get some questions going here. Team Dave Meltzer, right on time. If anybody wants Books, Guides, Exercises for free, david at dmeltzer.com. Justin, good morning. Thumbs up to you. Hey, Zeus, everybody. Tawanda, good to see you. Hello, everyone. It's going to be an amazing week. Let's get this going. It is what? Ask Me Anything Monday, 3 p.m. today on Clubhouse. Ask Me Anything. Ask Me Anything now. You want to go live with me? Let me know. Ask Me Anything Mondays. We are right here. It's all about the Q&A. You bring the questions. I'll bring the answers. I'm ready to go. Here we go. How to get better at balancing family and work life. Well, first of all, I don't believe in work. I believe in activity you get paid for and activity you don't get paid for. I love to get paid while I'm with my family. That's just an extraordinary thing, you know, uh, to figure out how to do that. But I utilize a weighted balance of understanding and taking inventory of my values and to utilize that in all activity, activity I planned, I don't have planned, activity I get paid for, I don't get paid for, my sleep, all of these are a weighted balance according and aligned with my personal values for that day. What personally is most important for me? My health, number one, my family, number two, the activity I get paid for, number three, which is utilized as a complete catalyst of the student of my calendar. Uh, so understanding that weighted balance every day and more importantly, not being afraid to change my mind, not being afraid to be called a hypocrite. It's okay because that just means I'm learning. That means I'm failing forward. That means that I'm expanding, growing and accelerating just like the universe. And I am not being left behind. And those are all great things. So uh, utilize that as a technique to balance, weighted balance of your activity you have planned and you don't have planned. Remember, there is no work. There's just activity you get paid for and activity you don't get paid for. Questions are piling in. Ask me anything Monday. Join me right now with the questions. If I don't get to you, come join me on Clubhouse for 3 p.m. Pacific time today. Ask me anything. You can go ahead. You can see where to text me, 949-298-2905. You all know where to email me, david at dmiltzer.com. Joseph, good day to you, my friend. How is New York? What actions did you take to start getting up so early? Well, it's all about what happens tonight because my tomorrow starts today. When I started living my today so that I can arise earlier and earlier and making the decisions that are aligned with waking up earlier and earlier, it became easier and easier. I also believe in lowering the bar, taking baby steps, bite-sized little steps. So if you're someone, and many of my clients uh, wake up at 6 a.m. and they want to wake up at 4 a.m. like me, they... Don't make the big change, you know, so uh, work your day. So my tomorrow starts at 9 p.m. tonight. Start moving whatever time your unwinding routine is a minute back. So if you uh, wake up at 6 a.m. and go to bed at 11 p.m. Uh, and you unwind at 10, move it to 9.59, 9.58, 9.57, 9.56. Move your unwinding routine up so that your today starts at the highest frequency you can plateau and grow. Shift the paradigm, the paradox of man-made constructive time in order to effectuate what you want. You don't have to begin your day at the bottom of the hill at 4 to 8 a.m. in the morning. That's not the beginning of my day. I'm already at a high frequency. I've set and positioned myself the day before at 9 p.m. for a better recovery for my body, as well as clearing all the interference of my subconscious and unconscious mind so I can understand what walks with me. The will of the power, the light, the love, and the lessons. That will that doesn't have interference, voids, and shortages while I sleep so that I plateau and grow. I don't live the myth of Sisyphus. Good morning, Nick. How are you? 
where I push a boulder to the top of the hill and feel stuck because it rolls back down to the bottom of the hill when I wake up. When I arise, I am arise. I am arisen to the highest frequency that I have. I am not at the bottom of the hill. Uh, I Very good. Quantum shift lead to massive change. That's for sure. Super Nick, you're incredible. Okay, how to fight against procrastination. Uh, so procrastination is lack of movement. So get moving. Um, <laughs> I like that. How can I stop pooping? Oh my gosh, this sounds like questions I get from my wife. Uh, <laughs> there's many solutions to that. Uh, so eat more uh, carbs. <laughs> I love that. I love this place. How to fight against procrastination. Keep on moving. Lower the bar. Make sure, you know, two minutes a day is worth more than two hours on a Saturday. Uh, we are... Uh, absolutely aligned. Someone asked with me about Gary, what, what did I say? Gary B talks about being contextual for each platform. Any tips? I'm actually uh, going to be speaking with Gary. We're going to be uh, keynoting the No Bull event together on April 7th and 8th. I think April 8th, Thursday, we're together. Maybe even do a fireside chat together. Uh, and uh, <laughs> all right, good. Um, I don't know where I'm at. How to fight against procrastination. Uh, procrastination, lower the bar, put an objective of two minutes a day, for example, get started, get moving, understand the difference between motivation and inspiration. Motivation gets you up, inspiration will get you there. Uh, how do I motivate my team when sales are low? You got to work with them. So if your sales are low, you got to get there, let them shadow you, work with them, supervise them. There has to be an integration, an energy shift. Uh, exactly. All right. April 8th is your birthday, Mr. Aaron Wexler, buddy. What's going on? Awesome. April 8th, no bull conference. All right. We got that all set. Thank you, Colin, uh, for this good question. Let's, uh, anybody want to go live with me? Let me know. Uh, more than happy to have you come on. It is Ask Me Anything Monday. We spend a little bit of time on Monday to get you going, to ask those questions, to get you aligned. Find out what supplementary genes synergistic to what you want during this week. Here's a, another question. How do you learn to give up control as a leader and delegate more? The key is to know the key of a leader is to be an intelligent follower. So if you are an intelligent follower, you're going to want to delegate more and learn on how and what people are looking for, acting for, and wanting for. And if you can understand what your team is, people around you, your consciousness, collective consciousness is looking for, fighting for, listening for, you can be an intelligent follower and feel confident that you can have them watch you, work with you, or you can supervise them. There's only three choices. And you got to get it all good at all three in order to be a, a leader. You, as a leader, you either have to have them shadow you, work with you, or supervise them. That's it. And once you get through that complete process, someone can shadow them, work with them, and they can supervise someone. Complete scalability, complete delegation. All right, let's bring some people on here live. Uh, I'm going to mix this up a little bit. Thank you so much. Request. Hey, David, I watched the episode with you and Jessica week. It really resonated with me. Thank you. That's a great one. If you haven't seen the playbook, download it, share it. Hey, hey. What's going on? That's so crazy. I'm sorry. I had, I had to spam you. I didn't know if you was going to see my messages. <laughs> no, I'm good, man. You're awesome. Are you keeping warm? Yeah, I'm keeping warm. Oh, it's, it's actually pretty warm. It's just uh, I'm being lazy right now, so I'm not in the car. <laughs> well, good. But, you got a question? Ask me anything Monday, man. You got a question for me? Yeah, so I was wondering if you traded, uh, did any trading. I haven't seen your page. I have, I'm new to your page, really, so I was just curious. Yeah, you know, for me, I do a lot of different trading, um, but I do something different than most people. I don't know. It, when you learn my story, I'm someone that did a lot of trading early on. I was a multimillionaire, lost over $100 million, uh, you know, 15, 16 years ago. Uh, and what I learned about trading was most people – don't do the hard part of trading, which is learning their timing and risk tolerance first, and then two, seeking expertise from people that know uh, the market, the market makers, and the sell and buy sides of the, of the equation. And so there's a lot of hard work that goes into trading. You know, no matter what you're trading, you got to find those people, those experts that know the market, know the market makers, know the buy and sell side of it, and then align it with your timing and risk tolerance. 
and you're going to find a lot of statistical success in trading because trading's done on emotion, right? People buy on emotion for logical reasons. And if you don't have those key components in place, you're just going to be waving in the wind, floating in the water, moving with the trends instead of taking advantage of them. Does that sound fair? Yeah, it does. I wanted to I also want to know if you did any mentoring with a uh, I do. I do free mentoring, group mentoring, and one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, my email is pinned below here. Just email me directly. I'll be happy to key you into whatever's best suited for you. But I mentor thousands of people. Uh, either, you know, we, we have almost 30,000 on our free trainings. We got group trainings that we do, and then one-on-one -on -one as well. Okay. All right? All right. I appreciate it. Reach out to me, my friend. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Cool. The money Machado. I like him. Macheco. <laughs> there we go. Give what the market wants. All right. Um, we're getting on to these questions. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I love this. What are you afraid of? Uh, well, whatever it is, uh, is ego based. So the need to be right, offended, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, guilty, resentful, in separate from anything uh but i just want to spend minutes and moments each day in fear i'm afraid of a lot obviously by my behavior and the actions that i take uh around those behaviors but the difference is today i only spend min minutes and moments in fear instead of days weeks months and years getting in my own way creating interference void shortages and obstacles between me and what i already have my health my wealth and my happiness uh it's a complete different uh, perspective to have. How do you overcome your fears? Uh, stop, drop, and roll. I'm a ferocious Buddha. Number one, you have to identify what you're afraid of. Two, you got to stop. You don't resist it, go over it, under it, through it, around it. You just stop. Then you breathe and get to your higher self, back to that baseline from your morning when you start at your highest frequency, knowing that that's where I want to be, my highest frequency, and then you roll in the right directions. When you're in fear, your mind, your body, and soul are on fire. Everybody knows when you're on fire, you got to stop, drop, and roll. Shipmeyourbook.com. Jake pin, uh, printed, uh, posted that up there. Shipmeyourbook.com. Uh, I'm happy to send and ship you my book for free. No problem. I'll sign it, send it to you, and pay for shipping. Is you are young what you do as a career? Uh, so when I was young, I believe a career is a portfolio. Uh, so I believe a career is a portfolio. It's not necessarily I'm a lawyer. I went to law school, uh, but that's not my career. My career is a portfolio of skills, knowledge, and desire that I've had uh, since I graduated law school and uh, you know worked within the context of legal research online, it was in an exit for that company, $3.4 billion, went to the Silicon Valley, increased my portfolio into the wireless proxy service space, then became CEO of Samsung's first phone division, convergence device division, which means smartphone in 1999, called the PCE phone, into my portfolio. And then I ran the most notable sports agency in the world. Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment, once again, into my portfolio, along with angel investing uh, and then other types of investing as well. Construction company developments, ski mountain, uh, golf course, all types of different things uh, that I had worked within. And then uh, Warren Moon, the Hall of Fame quarterback, and I portfolioed uh, our marketing and media company. And then moving on right now to TV shows, movies, content, books, speaking, coaching. It's just a portfolio of a career. Always angling to what I want and having faith I'll end up somewhere better. What are your thoughts on real estate in Minnesota? Determine upon your timing and risk tolerance, finding an expert that knows the market, the market maker, and of course, the buy and sell side. Uh, you can do very well anywhere in real estate, uh, knowing your timing and risk tolerance first. That's the biggest mistake people make. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. Bring someone else live. Ask Me Anything Mondays, 3 p.m. Pacific time on Clubhouse here on IG Live every Monday. It's just Ask Me Anything. We bring people on, answer questions. Hi, David. Hey, how are you? I'm fine, bro. Thank you so for joining me. My, uh, so my question is that uh, as I'm a teenager, I'm just like broke. So what should I have to do? Just like how is the state like just drop out? So what should I have to do any advice? Yeah, 
number one piece of advice is ask for help. When you're that young, you want to find a mentor, somebody that sits in the situation that you want to be in. Whatever it is that you think you're interested in, pick that mentor, ask them for help. Go ahead, shadow them, work with them. Let them supervise you, and then you'll be set and ready to go. You may learn that that's not what you want to do. Then you move on and find a new mentor from something else that you want to do. But you got to go ahead and detach your emotions from an outcome. You're starting early. Follow the skills, the knowledge, and desire that you have, you want, and you need. But you got to find a mentor. Do not try to do it on your own. You can learn so much, and there's so many people out there that will help you. All right? Yeah, yeah. And can I ask one more question? Sure. Uh, so I have to ask that you are not a mediocre uh, since you are young. Means you don't stay in, at one place. So how did you do that? I I missed the question. How did I stay in one place when I was young? <clears throat> no, I asked. Since you are young, you are not mediocre. Just like stay at one place. You do different, different things. Yeah, yeah, Am yeah. I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you do that? So I have what a philosophy. You to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a philosophy. I wanted to make as much money as I can. So no matter what I was doing, I was looking to see how I could make more money because I wanted to buy my mom a house and a car. And I grew up with nothing, no money. So by wanting to make more money and keeping my options open, developing my skills and my knowledge and my desire gave me more opportunity, more options. And I wasn't afraid or defining myself by a, a, a professional title. You know, I lawyer, yeah. doctor, failure. I was none of those, right? I have a law degree. I never called myself a lawyer, right? I kept my options open. Here's the general philosophy. I always was happy where I was. I knew I was at the right place at the perfect time. I angled to every, to every with everything I had, I angled. I didn't go direct at it. I knew that there'd be lessons making, when I say angled, it's because I made a ton of mistakes. I learned a ton of lessons. I had a ton of pain that instead of stopping me, encouraged me to move in a different direction, a better place, a better situation. But the one thing by wanting to make money and buy my own house, I was inspired. In other words, I had faith, no matter what I did, whatever you define me as, I'm gonna end up somewhere better than I am today. And that's what you can do too. Ask for help, know your what, your who, your how, your now, and your why. I promise you, I don't know how long it'll take, but you're going to get there, okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, I have one more question. Can I ask? Yeah, go ahead. It's, uh, it's Ask Me Anything Monday. You might as well ask, right? <laughs> yeah. I have a question like, uh, you. I know that you do uh, mediation. You know the importance of mediation. Yeah. Am I right? Meditation, yes. So... <clears throat> Uh, so I didn't, I am um, this, it's kind of uh, boring for some teenagers. Yeah. I could so what kind of advice do you uh, give them that they will start mediation and <clears throat> inspire kind of thing? Yeah. So tr try doing it two minutes a day. Think about it as a practice of being quiet. Nothing more than a practice of being quiet. Just try to be quiet for two minutes a day. Watch some YouTube videos from some guided meditation. So while you're being quiet, you can hear somebody talking you through a better mindset, a better place, a more relaxed being. When I was a teenager, you couldn't pay me enough money to meditate. There's no way I could have done it. I wish somebody would have told me, hey, just try practicing being quiet for two minutes a day. They didn't have YouTube back then, so I couldn't have anybody guiding me. They didn't even have an MP3 player back then, let alone MP4 players. So uh, mm -hmm. I was really at a disadvantage because the only people I knew that meditated were people that were high on their mom's couch, broke and sick all the time, or living up in the Himalayas or you know in the Ganja uh, in India you know, the Buddhist just sitting there meditating for years. So uh, yeah. I become a, a ferocious Buddha myself. I meditate every day. But I, when I started, lowered the bar two minutes a day with more than two hours on a Saturday and use guided meditation from, the, from YouTube and know that it's just practicing being quiet, okay? Yeah. All right, my friend. I kind Take of care. have... Bye. Have a Great nice Great questions. Day. Keep in contact with bye. me. Thank you. Yeah, bro. Uh, so yeah. how can I mail you? Uh, How email can you me, mean David, you? David at dmelzer.com. David at okay. dmelzer.com. Okay, okay, I got it. Oh, Thank bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, cool. Sony Walkman, perhaps? Yeah, perhaps. We were almost there, I think. Uh, when I was a teenager, I think we were almost there, maybe right there with a cassette player. They didn't have the eight track uh, me meditation or mediation, as my friend called it. I love it. Uh, you guys are awesome. If you have any questions, david at dmelter.com. Books, guides, exercises are always free. Today, Ask Me Anything Monday. We are always there, 3 p.m. Pacific time. You can see it. Friday training, always. And guess what else comes out today? The playbook. You can download it, like it, has all my trainings there. Millionaires, billionaires, entrepreneurs, all on the playbook. You can see them there. It's one of the top podcasts in the world. It's called The Playbook. Download it, share it. Where can I find a mentor and how? Just email me, david at dmelzer.com. david at dmelzer.com. I'm happy to help you. My text is there too. The yellow Sony Walkman with a black neoprene holder so you could jump rope and run with it around your waist. That's what I'm talking about, some of you. Hey, Mixie59, my brother, why are you so angry? Come on, give me a call. I'd love to talk to you and understand where you're coming from. Let me give everybody my cell phone, especially Mixie there, uh, Mixie59, because he's angry. And we all are collective consciousness and happiness here. My cell phone is 858-688-3294. That's my real cell phone. You can call me. Don't text me because I got a separate text number. I get too many texts. But uh, we are collective consciousness here of happiness. If you're not happy and you're angry, just go ahead, call me. I can help you. It's a much more productive way to be. And we all want everyone to be happy. We want them to make more money, help more people, and have more fun. With all the knowledge you have acquired now, what is one advice you could tell your younger self? It's always ask for help. Because that's what I tell myself, whether I'm 18, 28, 38, 48, I'm 53 now. I'm all, dude, who can help you? Once I know what I want, then it's finding out who can help me. Hey, hey, Jonathan Wells, back on track. Ohio State's greatest running back next to Eddie George. Sorry, brother. I have to give Eddie a plug there. He's a friend of mine as well. But even more important than that, he was a Houston Texan and was there with uh, David Carr, just killing it. And he's a good friend and uh, a member of my team, Jonathan Wells, Buckeye running back. I'm a Buckeyes fan. Can I have your number again, please? Yes. 858-688-3294. Call me. Don't text me. If you're going to text me, it's 949-298-2905. Or email me, david at dmelter.com. And Johnny Wells knows that's my real cell phone because he called me this weekend. So he knows that works. Would love to meet up, Dave. I'm in Irvine. All right, come by the studio. We'd love to see you. Eddie. Jonathan Wells humbly, he's like, I hate Dave. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie George is good. <laughs> he knows that. All right, here we go. Uh, within your experience, how do you recognize when patience has become stagnation? A feeling like there is a fine line between the two. Woo, that's temperance, right? How do we temper persistence and patience? Because here's the problem. The human mind cannot become aware of results until you put in 90% of the effort. The human mind cannot be aware of what we are doing until you've put in 90% of the effort. Therefore, stagnation is the status that occurs for 90% of the time, which then makes us feel as if we're stuck, if we're not moving, if we're nowhere. So what we need to do is to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of our potential, come to the realization that we're willing to put in the 90% of the effort to get to 25% of the result when we finally become aware of it. And then we know it's just 5% more effort to get to 50%. And it's 5% more effort to get to 100%. And it's probably less than that to get to 200%. And then less than that to get to 400%. People do not understand segmentation, compound interest, acceleration, and growth. If we can put ourselves into the mindset to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of our potential, not attach our emotions to an outcome, I am telling you, you will go further, farther, and faster than you ever imagined. I promise you that. Tawanda, good to see you. You inspire me as well. Thank you, everybody. We've got a few more minutes here. Let's see. People are coming on live. Let's see who wants to come on. Uh, with some great questions here. Uh, we'll get someone live here coming on. What is the obstacles that put your back against the wall? And what did 
it took for you to pull yourself back up. My ego <laughs> was the obstacle. I created so many void shortages and obstacles with the needs of the ego. And what I had to do was to understand the ferocious Buddha. I had to live within and take stake within who I was being gratitude saying thank you before i go to bed and when i wake up who here give me a thumbs up if you think you can say thank you before you go to bed and wake up because i promise you in 30 days it'll change your life now it took me nine months to do it for 30 straight days so i know that half of you by the night won't say thank you by the next morning another half won't say thank you within three days almost all of us can't say thank you even though it takes 0.1 seconds it's free and it's guaranteed to change your life that's what i'm talking about what's in our own way all right, I'm counting on you, Rodney, everybody, Big League. I'm counting on all of you that you can say thank you. Uh, Justin Pugh, I know you can do it. Brandon, good to see you. Thank you. Thumbs up. How to tell them how you felt without hurting another. Well, first of all, you can't control what other people feel. You cannot control what other people feel. You can't find outside of you what you can't find inside of you. The truth vibrates the fastest, sooner or later will come out. So you have to be as kind as you can for telling the truth and knowing that truth. And so uh, we never wanna hurt another person's feelings, but we can't control those feelings. Uh, and so, for example, if someone told me, uh, you know, something about me that they're feeling, determinative on how I feel about it will determine on how secure I am in it, has nothing to do about the other person. And uh, we want to use our truth as a qualifier. What do I mean? Okay, so our truth is a qualifier. When we become courageous enough to tell our truth and people fall away from us because we tell our truth, this is a good thing. It's a qualifier. It's qualifying those people that somewhere along the great chain of feeding are bleeding us or not feeding us. And so when we tell somebody our truth and they don't want to be around it, they're offended by it, they're resentful of it, they're guilty of it, whatever it may be, all it's doing is qualifying it from our life to lessen the interference voids and shortages, to allow only those people to feed us, to be closest to us, regardless of the relativity of who they are, family-wise, work-wise, community-wise. When you speak your truth, you are qualifying other people. I can't believe Mr. Weatherford's in the house, the greatest dad that I know. What's going on, my man? I missed you the other day with uh, Edwin and Eddie, uh, Milet, and we, Jimmy Quick. We, we miss you, buddy. Please give me a call. Let's go live sometime, Mr. Weatherford. I'd love to have you on. Best dad I know. If you're not following uh, my boy, please do. He's incredible. Uh, how did it feel when you get to the point when you said you made it? I still haven't made it. I'm on the consistent, persistent pursuit of my potential. I will tell you, when I was young, everything reaffirmed that money bought love and happiness. And when I made my first million dollars, 24 years old, bought my mom a house and a car, I felt as if I made it. But now I have a much better mindset that making it every day is to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of my potential, doing my best and helping other people. What does that mean? Making a lot of money, helping a lot of people, and having a lot of fun at Weatherford Five. You got it. Follow him, and uh, let's schedule Jake uh, for our boy to come live with me sometime. I'd love to catch up with him. That seems to be in the COVID, the virtual way of giving people hugs. Uh, so <laughs> we're there. Uh, here we go. It is Ask Me Anything Monday. Every Monday, you can join me on IG Live at 8 a.m. If you miss it, we're on Clubhouse at 3 p.m. If you miss anything, it's all downloaded on my podcast. Blessed to have one of the best podcasts in the world, The Playbook. Mr. Weatherford's on there. Download it. Share it. You'll love it. It's on every platform featured, Spotify, Entrepreneur, of course, Google, iTunes, etc. The Playbook. Download it. Share it. If you want to reach me, my contacts are below. David at dmelter.com. Books, guys, exercises, always for free. Working through these questions. Thank you so much. What's your favorite family activity? <laughs> my favorite family activity, believe it or not, is dinner. Uh, if I can have all my kids and my wife at a dinner, uh, I'm telling everyone it'd be the best selling TV uh, reality show ever, Dinner with the Meltzers. They probably end up taking my kids after a few dinner, but it is an entertaining, educational, inspirational, 
uh, event having dinner with the Meltzers. It's incredible. I would rather be there than on the sideline of a Super Bowl, uh, even if Mr. Weatherford was playing. I just love having dinner with my family. It with all of them. It's hilarious. All the big personalities and the intellect and the challenges. Uh, it's to me my favorite family activity by far, um, regardless of whether we're, <laughs> we're carrying in or not. <laughs> How are you today? I'm fabulous. Um, absolutely fab fab you less uh let me uh what am i gonna do here uh what am i gonna do all right i'm gonna go live with one more person so let's do this family is everything all righty david at dmelter.com it is ask me anything monday thank you for these great questions hopefully you're learning 3 p.m if i don't get you today hey 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 <laughs> <laughs> how are you oh what's up you got a question? I'm good. Good, good. You got a question for me? Yeah. Ask me anything Monday. Okay, yeah. My question to you is, um, you said you made your first million at 24, if I'm correct. Correct. Okay. Do you feel like with the experience you've gathered now, do you feel it's easier for you to make a million dollars now than it was for you then? Good question. So I think that it's way easy for easier for me now than it was then because I have all the situation knowledge. I have all these people that could help me. Uh, I've paid a lot of dummy tax. It's much, 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 much easier. And technology allows me to have more opportunity. I'm not limited to a set sphere of influence. I have the entire world that I have a low barrier or a low point of entry in order to create a community that's so large and unfathomable. So I think not only for me, uh, today at 53, much easier to make a million dollars. But also for a 24-year-old, there's much uh, less resistance, way more opportunity, and a lot, much bigger scale, scope, and size of opportunity for all. And it's just a mindset. Look, a third of the people are doing better than they ever have. A third of the people are doing the same as they ever had. And a third of the people are victims. And they are not doing well. And I want to help those third that are not doing well. I want to lift up and elevate the third that are stable. And I want to increase the people that are doing well. And we can do that by having the right mindset, the right heart set, and the right conscious continuum of the right things to say, do, believe, and understanding our personality traits, characteristics, obsessions, and addictions. All of those things will be aligned in order to effectuate what you want. Does that sound fair? Yeah, one more question. What is your idea of success? What do you define as successful? That's easy for me. Success is the daily ability to enjoy, to be happy with, the consistent every day, persistent without quit, pursuit of my potential, my happiness, and my truth. If I can enjoy pursuing my potential, my happiness, and my truth, I am successful. And that will allow me, I know, if I enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of my happiness, truth, and, 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 uh, and, and potential, I am going to make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. All of those incorporated into my mission to find a thousand people like you, to empower a thousand people in your lifetime, to empower another thousand to be happy. Thank you, my friend, for joining me. I'll see you soon. If you want to join me again on Clubhouse, I'll be there at three. Thanks so much. All right. right on. Uh -huh. Awesome. All righty. We are all rocking and rolling. It's Monday. Ask me anything Monday. Download the playbook. It's all the millionaires, billionaires, entrepreneurs, and my trainings all for free. Download it. It's every platform. Spotify, Entrepreneur, Apple. It's all there. And you got to Google. It doesn't matter. Just join me. The playbook. Go ahead. David at dmeltzer.com. 949-298-2905. It's pinned below. Everybody, thank you. If I didn't get to your questions, Frank, everyone there, I see you. Please join me on Clubhouse. It's Ask Me Anything Monday, 3 p.m. Pacific time there. Friday, free trainings. The podcast is always downloadable with all my trainings on it. If you want my books, my guides, my exercises for free, just email me, david at dmelter.com or shipmeyourbook.com. Shipmeyourbook.com. That's a lot to handle. Just email me. Ask me whatever you need. David at dmelzer.com. I answer myself. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you today, 3 p.m. Pacific time on Clubhouse. Ask me anything Monday. Enjoy your day. Be happy. And remember, be kind to your future self and do good deeds.